You know, when I first began doing these YouTube reviews, one thing I really felt was underrepresented was the North American Commodore 64 experience. While online I learned about all kinds of cool action games for the Commodore 64 I had no idea existed when I had one in the 80s, I kind of feel like games that take full advantage of a disk drive get kind of left out of the uh, Commodore 64 retro gaming uh, conversation. One such style of game that was popular in North America was the construction set game, and this is a good example of one. Now, one thing too is that this game has a surprising history. Uh, it started as uh, motocross on the Intellivision, and that engine ended up being reused for several titles, including RPM Racing on the Super Nintendo, and finally, you might be surprised to find out it's also used yet again as Rock and Roll Racing. Uh, now, Racing Destruction Set does not play like Rock and Roll Racing, but they share some of the same logic. Okay, well, let's get into the game a bit here. And so, as you can see, it's a split screen racing game, uh, but it plays a little bit different from what you might expect. Think of it as Excite Bike crossed with a slot car set. Like Excite Bike, you have to go over the jumps just right to avoid falling on your butt. And like a slot car set, you don't really steer in the turns as much as change lanes or decide whether to speed up or slow down. The tracks you race on are hugely varied and so is the choice of vehicles. And so are the game options. Uh, you're seeing a race right now at a very low gravity, which is why it's really floating at the moment. And when I say lots of options, I'm not joking. Sure, you can choose how hard the game plays, but you can also choose the rule set, you know, whether you want weapons or not, and several options for the gravity. Everything from having a car crashing straight down to having it float off the surface like you're on the moon. The car section is also incredibly varied with 10 different vehicles to choose from, different tires, you can choose different engines in each, and then you can outfit each with uh, weapons if you so desire if uh, that mode is on. You know, you've, you've got the standard cars, which you have to go pretty carefully over the jumps. You've got an indie car, which is great for those recreations of uh, actual racetracks. You have a dirt bike, which you can't really uh, crash on the jumps very easily with, but they're not too fast. Uh, and you can actually choose uh, different cars for you and your opponent, so you can kind of mix and match, do what-if scenarios, and things like that. And as you pick vehicles and change the specs, uh, you have to watch the weight because you can actually build vehicles that uh, can't even make it up a hill if you uh, if you really want to. And also keep in mind that you're going to want tires with spikes if you're going to be racing on ice. Otherwise, uh, well, you'll see what happens. So here, I'm going to show you what happens when you outfit a car with enough weight that it can't make it up a hill. I put a huge engine in this car thinking, well, that'll make it really fast. But uh, yeah, it has a really high top speed, but... Uh, it's not making it up this thing. Maybe if I get a really big head start. Ugh, man. Okay, well, let's look at some of the tracks it comes with. I mean, so in Racing Destruction Set, the biggest appeal is that you can design your own tracks, uh, you can modify existing tracks, come up with all kinds of crazy scenarios. Um, here's an example of all the tracks it just comes with when you first get the game. And it's got everything from tracks like Monza, which are real tracks, or Monaco, to these crazy tracks that, you know, even have cars uh, doing head-on collisions. I also have to point out a downside of this game, which is the load times. What you're seeing here is a mode it goes through when you select a different track, where it has to convert the track to a form it can use in the game, and this takes forever. And there are also load times for uh, picking different cars and things like that. Uh, setting up a race with the non-default options actually takes a decent chunk of your time. So, uh, you know, might want to keep track of those combinations, which are actually fun. Okay, so we talked about all the flexibility the game offers you, but how does it play? Well, if you're expecting something like RC Pro-Am or Super Sprint, you're going to be really, really disappointed. This game is not fast. In fact, uh, you know, I have to say, although it's a game I'm intensely nostalgic for, I have to say it hasn't really held up all that great in the face of later games that offer similar kinds of flexibility. 
You know, I'm thinking of stuff like Track Mania, where you can really design interesting tracks and it plays a lot better than this. That said, I think Racing Destruction set does uh, have a few things that it can offer, like, uh, you know, the way you play is uh, a little bit different from other racing games and there's a big emphasis on taking jumps well. It can be a really challenging game that's fun to tinker with and the uh, two player mode is still a lot of fun. But to enjoy it, you really do have to overlook something of a clutch factor. And that's not too surprising as the game is 30 years old this year. For a game this old, it really does boast a huge array of features and uh, the track format itself is just very impressive with all kinds of nuanced jumps available that, uh, you know, even in later games like Stunts for the PC that I played the hell out of, uh, you could not do a wide variety of slopes and jumps the way you can in the uh, Racing Destruction set. So this game wasn't really topped for a number of years in that department. And like I said, it really depends what you're expecting. I mean, if you, you know, if you're expecting an arcade-like experience, this won't give it to you. But if you want a racing game where you can tinker around with pretty much everything and you want to do it on an 8-bit system, well, this is your game. I've also mostly been showing you races on easy mode, so here's what happens on hard mode where you just floor the thing. And no discussion of Racing Destruction Set is complete without talking about its course editor. This thing is insanely flexible. I mean, look at this jump that I'm altering. You can, uh, you know, alter all these little uh, nooks and crannies of the course, cause the road to narrow and widen in all kinds of interesting ways. And if you're a SNES owner and this looks familiar, maybe you saw it in RPM Racing. As I mentioned earlier, this shares a lot of the same code and it's damn near the same track editor as Racing Destruction said. I think uh, this is actually the main draw of Racing Destruction Set. If you like making your own courses, you'll get a lot out of this game. Uh, you know, aside from doing different kinds of jumps, uh, you also have all kinds of different turns and merges, and uh, you know, you have three different kinds of terrain, dirt, ice, and pavement. There's a lot of combinations you can mess with in this. You can make stunt courses, you can make uh, traditional racing courses, you can do off-road courses. Uh, there's really a lot you can experiment with in this game. So yeah, whether Racing Destruction Set is worth your time depends a lot on what kind of gamer you are. I personally have a lot of fun with this one, even if it is showing its age these days. So if you like racing games and like tinkering, and you like the Commodore 64, this might very well be your game. Okay, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.